Hello everyone. Uh, today we'll be having an introduction of numerical integration and differentiation, which this topic is from chapter 5 uh, for course code MEC 500. Uh, and we'll be going through a little bit as well on Newton codes integration, uh, which is the early part of the numerical integration that we'll be learning throughout this chapter. Let us start with the general definition of differentiation uh, and then later we will take a look at the general definition of integration. So process of finding derivative dy dx in which the rate of change of a dependent variable with respect to an independent variable. So let's say we have two points xi and the other point is xi plus delta x which means that these two points are separated by a distance of delta x. We can calculate the slope of a straight line that connecting these two points by using this formula. Okay, so we use this uh, triangular shape uh, symbol delta y and delta x. So the gradient of this uh, straight line connecting between these two points is the uh, the first thing that we can do. Let's say if we reduce the size of the step size, if we reduce the size of delta x small enough which is close to zero, uh, it means that the two points is getting closer to each other and if it's small enough, it is almost like we are calculating the gradient of uh, two points or a single point. Right? So we can say it that when the delta x is reduced small enough, close to zero, the slope of the two points is getting closer to the gradient of instantaneous gradient of a point. Before we go to the numerical differentiation, let's take a look at the non-computer method for differentiation. We can use the equal area graphical differentiation. Let's say we have this data, x and y. We have six uh, data in this set. We start with finding the dif divided difference, delta y, delta x for each interval. It means that for every interval, we connect a straight line between the x equal to 0 uh, and x equal to 3. And then we calculate the slope or the gradient of that straight line. So we will get the divided difference for each interval. For example, the straight line that connecting between the data of x equal to 0 and x equal to 3, the straight line has a gradient of 66.7. And then we plot the delta y, delta x as a step curve versus x. And then we draw the smooth curve uh, that intersect the middle point of each step curve and then based on the drawn curve we approximate the instantaneous value of delta y delta x at specific value of x so now that instantaneous value of delta y delta x at specific value of x can be considered as the first derivative at that specific point Now we take a look at the general definition of integration. Before we go to the numerical integration, it is a good idea uh, to revise a bit the fundamental of integration. So integration is a process of finding integral i. So the i or the results of the integration, we call it as integral. Um, it means the finding the area under a function plotted on a graph. So that's what it means by integration actually. So looking at the formula area A is equal to the integral I equal to the integration of the fx dx. You can use grid to approximate an integral. Let's say you have xy data or you have a curve. Um, if you have x, y data, you need to plot the curve and then you count the number of boxes under the curve. Uh, of course, uh, we only count the number of boxes within the boundary of interest. And then you multiply the number of boxes to the size of area of a box in order to approximate the total area under the curve. 
so that total area become the integral of that function or the data of course if you use a finer grid or thinner strip you will have better approximation of your integral and later when you learn about numerical integration you will see um, this idea is actually become the basis of one of the numerical integration that we are going to learn in engineering we deal a lot with systems and processes that are changing or continuously changing these changes are always described and governed by differentiation and integration of the parameters involved for example uh, these are the differentiation involved in engineering number one finding the acceleration of a body from velocity functions and the second one is finding the velocity of a body from displacement data this is the examples of integration in engineering finding the displacement of a body from equation of motion and finding the moment of inertia of a body those things involve integration here are the things that can be differentiated and integrated mostly things that we have seen simple continuous functions such as polynomial exponential and trigonometry uh, we can apply analytical approach to do the differentiation and integration sometimes we have tabulated values or discrete data so this requires numerical approach we cannot apply analytical approach to do differentiation and integration and then the last one is the continuous and complicated functions this is also requires numerical approach because in nature it is very difficult or maybe even impossible to integrate or differentiate from now on we will focus on numerical integration integral can be written as this i equal to a where the fx in that formula is the integrand so the formula or the function that to be integrated we call it as integrand x as the variable of course a and b are the integration limits so numerical integrations or commonly known as quadrature can be done using few methods including newton coates integration formula secondly romberg integration and thirdly gauss quadrature let us start with the first technique which is the newton coates integration the newton coates formula are the most common numerical integration scheme this is the strategy of newton coates formula which is to replace complicated function or that function to be integrated we call it as integrand so we replace that complicated function or tabulated data with an approximating function that is easy to integrate so let's take a look at this function right fx equal to the exponent of log cos 5 to the power of minus x so clearly this function is very difficult to be integrated so go back to the strategy of newton codes where we are going to replace this function or this integrand with an approximating function that is easy to integrate okay so originally this is the integration or the integral so we are going to replace that fx with an approximating function which is easy to be integrated so we replace fx with fnx in this case let's say that fnx is a polynomial function of the form of this right so it is up to you whether it is a a first order polynomial which is a linear or straight line or second order polynomial which is quadratic or maybe cubic and so forth the replace integrand or the replace function can be an interpolating polynomial of any order for example you can have a linear or first order interpolating polynomial to replace your integrand 
Take a look at the figure over there. The original function or the integrand is actually the blue curve. The boundary is A and B. So what we do is we connect that two point of A and B with a straight line, meaning we are interpolating using a first order polynomial. So what we do here is we calculate the area under the straight line to approximate the real integral of the original function. Or maybe we can use a second order or quadratic interpolating polynomials as can be seen in the figure B. The integrand can also be replaced by a series of polynomials applied piecewise to the function or data over the segments of constant length. Here are the methods of applying Newton codes integration. The first one is single application. Let's take a look at the figure on the right hand side. We have border A and B. It is connected with a straight line. So the area under the straight line is the approximation of the integral. You can see this unshaded area wasn't taken into account by the approximation. So it is less accurate, especially if the boundary A and B are widely spread. In order to reduce the unshaded error, we can use the second method, which is multiple application. So we divide uh, the whole section between the boundary A and B into few segments. In this figure, we have three segments. So we have the area I1, I2, and I3. You can see that the shaded area is reduced effectively. So by applying single integral repeatedly for each sub-interval of data points, higher accuracy can be achieved. In the next topic, we will focus on Newton codes integration with the first order polynomial. Thank you very much.